This uh, short presentation is dedicated to the topic of placental mosaicism, which we'll explain in detail right away, which itself can, can lead to inaccurate results of the non-invasive prenatal testing procedure. So let's get right into it. So normally the purpose of NIPT test or the non-invasive prenatal DNA screening is to determine whether the fetus is an evolving or developing uh, accurately. However, please recall that both the fetus and the placenta are actually produced from fertilized egg. And what we're truly screening with the NIPT test is the placenta itself. However, there is a possibility that the fetus will be totally fine while only the placenta might be affected with some chromosomal abnormality. And if that is the case, then such a result of the test would lead to what is uh, called as false positive, meaning the test will suggest that the fetus is affected and there's some chromosomal abnormality present in the fetus, when that is actually not the case, the fetus is fine and it is only the placenta that is actually affected. There can be other reasons for false positives in the NIPT test, but this would be the predominant one. Luckily, we know from detailed analysis of this test that false positives overall from all causes happen at approximately 0.1% rate. It is precisely for this reason that you always want to confirm your false positive result test or basically a positive result test with another diagnostic procedure precisely to determine whether it is false positive or true positive. And it's irrespective whether the positive is from an NIPT test or from a traditional blood screening uh, process that typically pregnant women undergo. So when you do get positive result with your NIPT test, there's two potential outcomes for you. Number one, you should always confirm it if it's available to you with a diagnostic test. And uh, in this case, that would be amniocentesis. Or number two, you continue with pregnancy and see what the outcomes is. And we do know historically that some small percentage of women, when they do obtain positive NIPT test results, they elect to terminate the pregnancy. And this is probably one of the largest risks of the NIPT test is that if you do not confirm your positive result with a diagnostic test, there's a small but real chance that a healthy fetus could be terminated. There is also a small but very real risk from undergoing amniocentesis that this will also lead to, to pregnancy loss. However, what is very important to, to note is the fact that the NIPT false positive rate is so small of only 0.1% compared to the traditional testing, which is much, much higher at around 5%, which means a lot more women have to undergo diagnostic testing using the traditional approaches than they would be required based on NIPT results alone. Now we're actually going to get into the topic of what placental mosaicism is. And that is an event where only a fragment of placenta is actually affected with some chromosomal abnormality and the rest of the placenta is normal as well as the fetus. That would still lead to a false positive result depending on how much placenta is affected. Another possibility is that a portion of placenta and portion of the fetus are affected. This is much more rare. 
placental mosaicism on its own is more commonly observed. But in either case, if both the fetus and the placenta are only partially affected by chromosomal abnormality, if less than 30% of those cells making up both the fetus and the placenta are affected, the NIPT test will not be able to potentially detect that event at all. And in that case, that would lead to a false negative result, meaning that the test assumes that everything is fine, when in reality, at least a portion of either both the fetus and the placenta or just the placenta is affected. And that in itself can have clinical outcomes. Once again, based on some of the studies, we know that it, the percentage of false negative results, we can estimate at about 0.3%. This number can fluctuate, and the reason why is because it depends on how large the study comparing the diagnostic results to an IPT results might be, but this is one of the best estimates we currently have. So this explains how placental mosaicism can affect the NIPT results and overall why NIPT positive results always need to be confirmed. So always keep that in mind when you're electing to use the NIPT test for screening whether your fetus is developing normally or whether there might be any chromosomal abnormalities present or not. I hope this helps and thank you very much and we'll see you next time.